Hi everyone, this is Eamon from the KX Customer Success Team and today I'm going to take you through a demonstration of the Visual Query Builder available as part of KX Dashboard. The Visual Query Builder intends to give users who don't have a knowledge of QSQL or any other programming language access to data stored in a KDB Plus database. The first example that we're looking at is a KX for Algo environment um, which is displaying the results of a backtest run for a volatility spread algorithm the table we can see is called DFX quote algo, which is displaying the bid and ask results uh, that the, have been generated uh, by the algo that we've run in the back test. First of all, I'd like to filter down to only concentrate on a handful of the, of the columns. So I'm going to add a filter uh, and then we'll select which columns we would like to filter down. Uh, so we'll select the source time, the sim, uh, and we'll also select the bid and the ask. Uh, for the bid and the ask, I'm going to rename these. So we have algo ask uh, and we'll have algo bid. So I'll press save and that will then add in, um, uh, add in the filter. And now we can see below the results uh, showing the four columns that I've selected. And then going to add a join, which will allow me now to add in a second data source. And um, what I want to do is compare um, the, the quotes that were uh, supplied to the algo and to the quotes that were generated by the algo. And I'm going to do that using the DFX pool quote table, um, which is a table of aggregated quotes. So if I look at DFX pool quote, um, here I can see again a series of columns. And I would again like to filter around this data, uh, one to select a handful of the columns, but also to, to only look at uh, the level zero prices. Um, so first of all, we'll add in a where cause rule and we'll select where level uh, equal to zero. And second of all, then I will again select the columns that I'm interested in. So source time and sim, uh, bid and ask. So I added my filter and now I can see I have two different, um, two different tables, which are both gonna feed into the join. So in terms of the type of join, I have an, a selection of a few different types of joins that I can use. In this case, I'm going to use a union join and I'm simply gonna press save, which will then union join each of these two tables together. Um, so what I can see is uh, the table of algo bids and asks, which is first, uh, and then the subsequent uh, rows would show uh, the DFX pull quotes. Um, but in order to effectively compare these, I would like to resort the data on time to see what the bid and the ask was and the algo bid and ask was at the same time. So next I'm going to add a function. Uh, what this function is going to allow me to do is to, um, is to sort the data. So I'll simply press sort, uh, select the sort function uh, and then I want to sort that on uh, the source time column. So let's just uh, write in source time as the parameter and here then I can now see the data sorted on the column uh, and if I press the result then I can see the results of this which will then show me uh, each of the, the, uh, the quotes that have been generated in both the, the pull quote uh, and the DFX quote algo table alongside one another. The next example that I'm going to show is for a um, is for a, another algo example, uh, and what we're doing here is is handling real time data. Um, so in the DFX pull quote table, I have the so in DFX quote, pull quote, I have the the latest uh, quotes streaming in in real time. So here I can see each of those quotes uh, streaming in. Uh, I then again, uh, like we've seen in the previous screen, I filtered this down to look at a, a set of columns um, that I have, uh, that I'm interested in. Uh, and then I'm going to apply a group by SIM, which is going to allow me to um, find the latest quote uh, for each of the instruments, uh, also known as the SIM column. Um, what I have below is a reference table, which, which we've called pair ref. Uh, and what pair ref has is the, the instrument, uh, as well as the pip size, uh, for each of these instruments. So again, I'm going to filter down to just look at the SIM and PIP size columns. Uh, and now I'm going to do a left join on the SIM column, which will join on that PIP size uh, to all of the quote information. I then subsequently pass this to a, a, a function called update spread, uh, and I choose the number of PIPs that I want to update this by. So here we're looking at, uh, we're looking at 10 PIPs. Um, which will then mark up the prices that, uh, that we're receiving by 10 pips. 
Uh, I then update the source to be demo algo markup. Uh, and then finally, I can see the result. So um, what we have also done on the dashboard is uh, allowed for the ability to save this, uh, save this uh, uh, query that we have created. So this is called markup. Uh, and then I can simply press enable. Uh, and what that will do is begin to apply this algorithm to the data that we're receiving in real time. So in the, in the next section of the, the dashboard, what we can see is for uh, Euro Yen, uh, and we can see all of the prices flowing in in real time for algo bid and ask and market bid and ask. Uh, and what I can see at the start is the, the red and the green, the bid and the ask, um, which was streaming in before we had begun um, generating the, the, the quotes from our algo, which had been marked up. And then subsequently, after we've enabled our algo, we can see the yellow and the blue lines representing um, the bid and the ask that we're generating uh, as the marked up prices um, using our algo. So this is an example of creating some very simple uh, logic, which we can then apply in real time um, to data that we're receiving. Um, the final part of the demonstration uh, is going to look at creating a dashboard from scratch um, without writing any queue whatsoever. Um, so first of all, we're going to uh, take a look on the left-hand side. What we can see is the list of different widgets that I have available. Uh, in the middle, I can see my workspace. And on the right-hand side, I can see any configuration options um, to allow me to configure the dashboard itself, as well as the widgets that I select. I'll first drop, uh, drag in a drop-down list, uh, and I'm going to use this to allow me to configure an instrument that I want to select. Uh, when I drag in the drop-down list, then I can see the option to select a data source on the right-hand side. So when I open up the data source, what I can see is I have a number of different options uh, for different types of queries that I can use. So if I'm skilled in writing uh, QSQL, I can uh, simply type out a QSQL statement. If I want to select a, an, an analytic, I can come to the analytic section and select it here. And But what we're looking at is the builder section. Uh, so here I can select uh, the builder section um, and I can select a particular table um, to allow me to, uh, to return data as well as applying all of those actions and things to the table as well. And so here again, we're gonna look at the DFX quote table. So maybe I'll just search for that at the top. So here we have DFX quote, I'll double click. And then we can simply press execute. That's gonna show me the DFX quote table. Um, but what I would like to do is find the distinct instruments in this table. So I'm gonna add a group by, and I'm gonna simply group by the sim column. So if we now execute this, this will now show me a table, which is, is actually displaying the last row for each instrument. Um, but if I look at the sim column, that is now gonna be the distinct list of instruments that I have within the DFX quote table. So I'll simply press apply and select. In my data source mapping, I'll choose the sim column as both of the, um, as both of the data source uh, mapping uh, selections. Uh, and I'll also choose a view state as the selected view state uh, that I want to store this result in. So now I can see the drop down list of values and I'm able to select between each of those. Now we want to use this view state to feed into, a, uh, to feed into another data source, which will allow me to return the quotes uh, and visualize those. So what we're gonna do is drag in a data grid component. So here I'll drag in my data grid. Um, we'll extend that to be the full width of the, the dashboard. And I'm gonna create another new data source. So we'll create a new data source uh, and we'll call this one um, quotes. Um, once again, I'll select the, the builder option and I'll select the DFX quote table. And now what I want to do is add a filter to filter these quotes to show, um, to show the quotes from the instrument that I selected via the dropdown. So we'll add a, a new rule. Uh, and this is going to be applied to the SIM column. And then I can see the view state button, which I can easily click, select the view state. And when I execute this query, this will now return all of the quotes uh, for the instrument that I've selected in the dropdown. So I'll return those. And now you can see as I uh, filter through the different uh, instruments, I can see uh, the data grid updating uh, to show the different quotes. And uh, finally, I'm going to drag in a chart GL component um, to allow me to easily visualize this data. So I'm going to add a first data source, which is going to be, uh, again, is going to select the same quotes uh, data source that I've used before. So I don't need to create a second one. 
Uh, on the x-axis, we'll choose time, and on the y-axis, we'll choose the bid, uh, and we would like this to be a line. Um, we can choose then a color, so let's put this as red. And then we'll add a second layer just to, to display our ask press as well. So we simply select the quotes as part of the data source. Again, time is on our x-axis, uh, and we'll select ask as our y-axis, and then we'll give this a nice green color as well. Uh, and then we'll just update the name, ask and bid. And now we've, um, in, a, in, in a matter of minutes, created a very simple dashboard to allow me to filter between different instruments, uh, view the, uh, the resulting output within a data grid, as well as within uh, a line chart below. Uh, thank you for your time, everyone. And if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them.